A very good morning to all our esteemed guests, chief guests, and our dignitaries on the floor. May I request Srinivasan sir to please escort our esteemed chief guest on the dais, please. May I request? May we request everyone to rise for the national anthem. May we request everyone to rise for the national anthem. Jai Hind. Good morning, esteemed ladies and gentlemen. I, Alha Mehta, along with my friend Manasvi Malvia, the students of Alcon International School, feel privileged to host this prestigious event. We welcome you to the 14th edition of the Sansad Ratna Awards function, a solemn occasion to honor the outstanding Indian parliamentarians. I now invite Srimati Priyadarshni Rahul, Chairman, Sansad Ratna Awards Committee, 
to deliver a welcome address. A very good morning to all our MPs, esteemed guests, and media friends present here. I welcome our respected chief guest, Sri Hansraj Ahirji, Honorable Chairman, National Commission for Backward Classes. Dr. Tamarisei Saundar Rajan, Honorable Governor Telangana and Honorable Lieutenant Governor Puducherry, Sri Ajay Kumar Mishraji, Honorable MOS Home, Sri Arjun Ram Meghwalji, Honorable Law and Parliamentary Affairs, who will be reaching us in a bit of time, Justice Sri Sanjay Kishan Kaul, former judge, Supreme Court of India, to the 14th edition of Sansas Rathna Awards 2024. It just looks like yesterday that we started this unique concept of recognizing best performing parliamentarians on the suggestion of Dr. Kalam. This dream concept of Dr. Kalam was got to reality by the relentless efforts of Prime Point Srinivasan sir. And now we look back its responsibility and highest caution with utmost neutrality. Today we are overwhelmed with pride and gratitude to see three of our award winners have occupied the highest offices and have consented to be the chief guests to the same function they had been once in. Sri Ahirji, Sri Meghwalji and Sri Ajay Mishraji. This is a testimony to the quality of awards that could identify national leaders much before their national stature. This uniqueness of Sansad Ratna Awards is our selection process in identifying the best performing parliamentarians, which is data driven and transparent. PRS India is our knowledge partner for data. We have been applauded by the best brains, political experts, and eminent MPs themselves that our selection process is competent and one of the best way in analyzing MPs' performances. We are fortunate to have a jury committee for the 17th Lok Sabha representing both civil society and the political expertise. The jury committee is headed by Sri Meghwalji, Honorable MOS Law, and co-chaired by T Sri T.S. Krishnamurti, former Chief Election Commissioner of India. We put consistent efforts in upgrading the process year after year and expanding its analysis from Lok Sabha to Rajya Sabha and to parliamentary committees under the able guidance of our mentors. This year, we have also introduced Sansad Maharatna to parliamentary committees and a new category called Sansad Utkrisht Maharatna for the outstanding performance of MPs who topped both in the 16th and the 17th Lok Sabha. All of this could not be possible without a working team in place with conviction and commitment towards nation building with impeccable trust in the system and unshakable belief in an optimistic future. Sansad Ratna team holds professionals from various walks of life, volunteered to break the misconception the general public unfortunately holds for politics. In this process, that is not too easy, the team shows highest grit to storms and fullest dedication to the vision in keeping the sanctity of these esteemed awards. As Dr. Kalam says, give your best to the world and the world will give you back the best. Here. Today, we have proudly presented the Sansad Ratna Award winners of 2024, expecting much more of such performers be seen in years to come. I once again wholeheartedly welcome each one of you to this esteemed Sansad Ratna Awards function that celebrates progressive political performances every year. Jai Hind. Thank you, Priyadarshini Rahul Ma'am. May I now invite Sri Prime Point Srinivasanji, founder and chairman, Prime Point Foundation and founder Sansa Tatna Awards to deliver introductory remarks. Good morning, Jai Hind. I am extremely delighted to invite you all for the 14th edition of Sansa Tatna Awards. In this 15 years, we have been running, we are running the 14th edition one year because of the COVID, we could not do that. We have an eminent uh, chief guest, Mr. Ansra Jahir, is the first Sansad Ratna awardee in 2010, and he received four, uh, five Sansad Ratnas and one Maharatna award of 15th Lok Sabha. We are greatly honored that uh, such an eminent person, a four-time MP and uh, a Sansad Maharatna awardee and former minister is uh, chief guest. Now he's in the cabinet rank of uh, a chairperson of NCBC. We are greatly honored. And uh, Arjunra Meghwalji, I'm expecting any time because of the uh, some of the party meetings are going on. 
and he is also four times sansad ratna awardi and one maharatna of 15th lok sabha and uh, for, uh, now he continues to be the minister because sansad ratna always uh, uh, you know the immediate next is only the ministership and we have another eminent uh, sansad ratna awardi ajay mishra ji another sansad ratna awardi is also part of our uh, ka, ka chief guest and really we are greatly honored and proud to have all the sansad ratnas uh, assembled on the stage madam tamilisai saundarrajan dr tamilisai saundarrajan is uh, uh, very well known to me for a long time and a very very down to earth and simple person in fact without any formalities i just called her our telephone mobile and say, asked her whether she could join for the sansad ratna award to be held on 17th she said within 2 minutes my adc will call you within 2 minutes is adc called and said that the 17th madam is free you can send a formal letters and other thing that's how she is so down to earth and uh, uh, we have uh, such a eminent personalities uh, 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 before us judge justice uh, sk kaul i am from chennai he was there as a chief justice of madras high court and he is still considered as an iron man of madras high court such a lot of reforms he has done it and he is uh, very well known for his uh, very uh, very notable judgments now we have uh, probably might have seen sansad ratna maharatna and utkrishna ratna sansad ratna is given annually sansad maharatna is given once in 5 years for 15th lok sabha they have hans raj ahir ji he got it and uh, jandra megwal got it and uh, 16th lok sabha we had uh, three eminent personalities they are all here only they got a sansad maharatna that is given once in 5 years for the consistent performance sansad utkrishta maharatna is above like a phd because two parliaments if they continuously consistently perform they get utkrishta maharatna today we have a three eminent parliamentarians batrikri madhav supriya suleji and appa uh, barney ji three pa parliamentarians having uh, consistently performed in 16th lok sabha and 17th lok sabha they are uh, receiving the utkrishta maharaj this is the first time we have introduced because they are going on performing because we don't know what to do because at the same time mr ts krishnamurthy coach or person suggested that we should honor them somehow or other because they are performing so that's how we immediately did it and uh, the credibility because of the 15 years we have our procedure is very tough for selection process as a uh, jury member also mr ansaraj here knows and how selection process we are data driven and uh, we get the data from prs india we get the data from lok sabha and rajya sabha our processing is uh, there is a screening committee headed by mr nurulla he is here he is a very senior journalist and eminent professors are there first level screening second level screening then it goes to the jury committee for approval that is uh, you know churning like uh, you know like churning we are uh, doing it and uh, the credibility is highest even our dr abdul kalam in the last book manifesto for a change he devoted one full chapter on the sansad ratna he interviewed uh, uh, both mr ansra jahir and arjun ram megwal ji at the time they were sansad maharatnas of 15th lok sabha he interviewed them and published them if uh, ansra ji remembers that and uh, such a wonderful lucky uh, every year he used to give me the guidance on that second is in the upsc examination for the past four years sansad ratna award is one of the suggested questions by all the question banks in fact this time also last week i saw who are all the recipients of sansad utkrishta maharatna that new word has been coming up and it is a uh, upsc aspirants are uh, studying now and uh, last year prime minister honorable prime minister modi ji has uh, tweeted in his personal tweet about the sansad ratna uh, greeting and uh, today evening i am another happy uh, information that the honorable president draupadi murmu ji has invited all the sansad ratna awardees uh, to uh, rashtrapati bhavan at 4 pm for a photo session today all the sansad ratna are for getting this uh, uh, citation and uh, they, uh, they will also be having a photo session with the honorable president and uh, this is a very uh, unique thing is this sansad ratna is managed by young team headed by priya and uh, so we have consciously uh, gatul kalam wanted the youngsters and women should get empowered so we are trying to follow elders we are giving a, a, a mentoring 
and the youngsters they are doing executing things so we are br bringing the wisdom of the seniors as well as the energy and enthusiasm of the youngsters this is one of the great models that we are trying to implement successfully we are running it and uh, uh, one particular suggestion they were every year i want to come before conclusion one suggestion i always make one is this time i wanted that uh, uh, academically the universities they don't research on the parliament functions or the parliament performance on that thing they simply go on the politics and other thing the politics paper is there we tried for uh, i asked the priyadarshini to uh, do a phd on the parliament we have a such a ample data from 14th lok sabha 14 15 16 17 we have enough data and they, we are not able to do a research some uh, they do uh, there is no sufficient professors also not available some of them she has registered with the university but they don't have a, uh, proper professors to the, then we are trying to help or uh, co guiding so uh, there are lot of parliamentarians are here and you should also even uh, honorable uh, chief minister's family of maharashtra's chief minister's family also is here we are very grateful to you all and you must take it up at least in one state where maharashtra state we can uh, they can uh, advise the academician to experimentally to do a research on phd for that our another sister organization next gen political leaders is another organization and uh, that we will give all the helping and we wanted to create more number of future leaders today we are very happy out of 15 uh, sansad ratna award is five award is are from maharashtra and five are youngsters really it is a great advantage and it has developed a lot of competitive spirit in fact uh, uh, with that note i welcome and once again i greet all the sansad ratna sansad maharatna sansad utkrishta maharatna award is they are all role models for the nation and they should uh, uh, the youngsters should emulate their performance and with this i welcome them and i also give an introduction of this particular background if any help is needed they anybody can approach us for uh, any support on academically for doing a research jai hind vande mataram bharat mata ki jai thank you prime point shrinivasan sir on behalf of the sansad ratna awards committee we will now honor the dignitaries on the dais may i invite shri deepak kapoor assistant general manager canra bank to honor shri hans raj ahir ji honorable chairman national commission for backward classes he is also the patron of the sansad ratna awards committee may i invite shri vikas arya secretary arya samaj educational society DAV schools chennai to honor madam dr tamilisai sondara rajan ji honorable governor of telangana and honorable lieutenant governor of puducherry may i now invite mr rajiv bagga india head dbs bank to honor Shri Arjun Ram Meghwal ji honorable MOS for law and parliamentary affairs and chairman of Sansad Ratna Awards jury committee may i now invite Partha Reddy ji to honor Shri Ajay Mishra ji honorable MOS home affairs May I now invite Partha Reddy ji to honor Shri Ajay Mishra ji honorable May I now invite Sri Hemalata ji to honor honorable justice Sri Sanjay Kishan Kaul ji former judge Supreme Court of India
Thank you all. I now request Srimati Suparna Gangalji, Additional Secretary, Prime Point Foundation, to read the greeting messages received from dignitaries. Excerpts from the greeting message of Sri C.P. Radhakrishnan, Honorable Governor of Jharkhand. Since its inception in 2010, the Sansadratna Awards have served as a beacon of recognition for exceptional contributions to our parliamentary system. Inspired by former President of India and great scientist Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, who inaugurated the prestigious ceremony in May 2010, the awards continue to uphold their mission of celebrating the dedication and achievement of our top performing leaders while inspiring others to strive for excellence. Excerpts from the greeting message of Dr. M. Virappa Moili, former Chief Minister of Karnataka and Union Minister. I am also happy to note that three standing committees are honored with the Sansad Maharatna Awards for their consistent performance. I am confident that this initiative will strengthen the roots of democracy. Excerpts from the greeting message of Sri T. S. Krishnamurti, former Chief Election Commissioner of India and Co-Chairman of the Jury Committee, Sansad Ratna Awards. Needless to stress, the survival of any democracy depends upon active participation of representatives elected through free and fair elections. I have no doubt that the Sansad Ratna Awards will continue to motivate our parliamentarians to render public service for the improvement of the quality of Indian democracy. Thank you. May I invite Sri Nivasan sir to honor Sri Hans Raj Ahirji, Honorable Chairman, National Commission for Backward Classes. He is also the patron of the Sansad Ratna Awards Committee. Thank you. At every Sansad Ratna event, we release our publications free of cost as ebooks for the benefit of the younger generation and the general public. This year, we are releasing two ebooks titled Compilation of Editorials Published in the Magazine Precincts During the Years 2020 to 2023 and Compilation of Cover Stories published in 2023. We are also proudly releasing a book titled Handbook for Young Indian Political Aspirants, authored by Ms. Priya Darshani Rahul. I now request the dignitaries on the stage to release the book. Thank you. May I now request Honorable Justice Sri Sanjay Kishan Kolji, former judge, Supreme Court of India, to deliver his keynote address. Honorable Chief Guest. Honorable Lieutenant Governor and Governor, uh, eminent people on the dais, members of Parliament, ladies and gentlemen, Namaskar. Uh, it's a privilege to be delivering the keynote address at the 14th edition of the Sansad Ratna Awards. Uh, unusually, as a judge, I find myself surrounded by the political system today. Uh, a short while ago, Mr. Srinivasan shared the history of the award. I was pleased to hear that it is the only award instituted by civil society to recognize and commemorate parliamentarians who have dedicated their lives to serving our people. After all, the parliament is the hall of democracy and that's what takes root from there. Uh, what makes the award unique is that the awardees are selected on the basis of an objective performance uh, across party lines and that are provided by credible bodies such as PRS and the Lok Sabha Sectariat. The awardees today are all distinguished leaders 
from across the country who have regard for their sincerity and sense of duty and above all a shared vision to India's progress. I extend my heartiest congratulations to each of them and to the organizers. I do not intend to discuss the role of parliamentarians as that would be preaching to the choir for this. I look to each one of you to lead by example. However, having uh, recently demitted office as a judge of the Supreme Court, I do think the relationship between the legislature and the judiciary is worth thinking about, both as an end and as a means to an end to strengthen the functioning of India's democratic institutions and achieve the values set in our constitution. Uh, traditionally, the judiciary is seen as a check on the legislature, so much so that a running theme of Indian politics is the friction between the legislature and the judiciary. Uh, Aladi Krishna Swami Ayer, a prominent member of the Constituent Assembly, explained that judiciary should not function as a super legislature since it depends as much on the cooperation between the other pillars. Viewed in this way, uh, the judiciary does not tread into the legislative domain, but reviews the legislative action on the anvil of constitutional values. We are all familiar with the landmark judgment of the Supreme Court in Keshwanand Bharti's case. In this case, the court recognized the power of the parliament to amend the part three of the constitution but carved out the basic structure doctrine, imposing a check that amending power would not extend to the basic feature of the constitution. Although there have been some instances where courts have assumed the more expansive power, such as the PILs, the judiciary has largely been mindful of the institutional limitations. The understanding, however, is limited in several ways. For example, in view of the relationship between the legislature and the judiciary as unindirectional as opposed to the reciprocal. We are as much a parliamentary democracy as a constitutional democracy. Therefore, it is imperative for the legislature and the judiciary to facilitate inter-institutional cooperation. This can be done through inter-institutional dialogue. Two examples on the way which can be achieved comes to my mind. First, the courts go through the jurisprudence that recognizes the legislature policy discretion. We saw the most fitting example of this recently in the opinion penned down by Chief Justice Chandrachud and myself in Supriyo versus Union of India, recognizing the right of the same sex person to enter into civil union. While we recognize that there were institutional limitations in striking down or reading in the words of the Special Marriage Act 1954, we set out clear obligations of the state to recognize the same-sex union and grant benefit under the law. I am conscious, of course, of the fact that this is the minority opinion. The opinions also lay down guidelines to ensure meaningful recognition to the rights of the union. Significantly, the opinions record the submission of the Solicitor General to constitute a committee to elucidate the scope of the entitlement of the queer couple in the union, and with that, some contours for the committee to consider. According to me, this was a means for the judiciary to enhance the systematic effectiveness of the legislature without merely invalidating statutory provisions as unconstitutional. The latter is not often easy as it can create serious gaps in legal protection and certainly fashioning remedies in this manner facilitates institutional dialogue and leaves the legislature with sufficient discretion and even has the potential to influence legislative outcomes. They identify gaps for other institutions to fill. At the very least, decisions such as these can serve as an important source for parliamentary debates and a powerful tool in the hands of the opposition. That brings me to the second example of the inter-institutional dialogue. Parliamentary debates. Debates can be relied upon by courts not only to interpret the law but also to test the law. This is in addition to their role in democratic politics. For example, the courts are regularly required to interpret statutes in line with its object, which can be gathered not only from the statement of objects and reasons but also from debates. 
Justice Lokar put it in perspective when he says, a reference may be made to the constituent assembly debates or to parliamentary debates as indeed to any other relevant material to understand the context in which the constitutional or statutory provisions are framed and to gather the intent of the lawmakers, but only if there is some ambiguity or uncertainty or incongruity or obscuring in the language of the provision. Similarly, one of the tests to ascertain whether a legislature may, legislation makes a reasonable classification under Article 14 of the Constitution is that it should have a reasonable nexus to the object sought to be achieved by the statute. The objective can be gathered from the parliamentary debates. Of course, the objectives must be legitimate. Courts cannot upheld an illegitimate objective. At the same time, debates that reflect the balancing efforts by the legislators of cost benefits assist courts in the assessment of whether the legislation strikes an adequate balance, that is, whether the benefit to the public outweigh any harm that it may cause. As the former Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Israel, Aaron Barak puts it, the zone of proportionality is the legislature's kingdom. Keeping the boundaries intact is the judge's kingdom. With courts insisting that all laws measure up to proportionality, legislators too are incentivized to internalize the values that animate the standards of proportionality. Uh, where there are several other ways in which judiciary and the legislature can cooperate with each other, it is important of constructive dialogue that I want to leave you with today. I have had personally the opportunity to uh, discuss with the parliamentary subcommittees dealing with law and other affairs. And I thought those dialogues, whether it occurred in Chennai when they came or in the Supreme Court when I headed the National Legal Service Authority, helped in uh, understanding the perspective of the legislature and also for them to understand what our concerns are. Uh, that is why today the, the, on the technology issue, the government has been uh, sanctioning the full funds which was required to take the whole working of the court system into a different domain with uh, technology playing an important role. Um, if this is kept in mind, that we are conscious of it, it will ensure a greater accountability and enhance democratic process. I am sure that the awardees will be conscious of this and they charter the course of India in future. Um, let me end by saying that one of my former chief justices told me once, and I believe that's true, there is always a little uh, underlying friction which arises from the role we provi uh, provide. Uh, the legislature always believes that they have the domain to legislate and they are the elected representatives of the people, all of you are. But the check and balance is then provided in the constitutional scheme, which provides for an administration, a legislature, and the court. And since especially we have a democracy which is first past the poll concept, uh, where most uh, governments uh, would be having uh, almost less than 50% votes, the court plays an important role in keeping a check and balance on the system. So he would say that a little bit of underlying tension is good. If things are very hunky-dory between the judiciary and the executive, then we have a problem. And that, I think, reflects the role of each of us in doing so. My congratulations again for the, purpose, for the persons who have been awarded for their achievements. Parliament needs to debate, and I think that's the most important function. I hope that the awardees inspire more of our spirited youth to become parliamentarians. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your insightful and thought-provoking speech. May I now invite Sri Ajay Kumar Mishra Ji, Honorable MOS, Home Affairs, to deliver the felicitation address. Prime Point Foundation Ke Dwara, Sansad Ratna, संसद महारत्न और संसद उत्कृष्ट रत्न ऐसे अवार्ड के इस फंक्शन में मंच पर उपस्थित तेलंगाना राज्य की महामहिम राज्यपाल पुदुचेरी की एलजी श्रीमती तमिल साई सौंदर राजन जी नेशनल बैकवर्ड कमीशन के चेयरमैन 
और जिन्होंने कई बार संसद रत्न से अवार्ड को प्राप्त भी किया सम्मानित भी हुए ऐसे बहुत ही उत्कृष्ट सांसद भी रहे केंद्र सरकार के मंत्री भी रहे श्री हंसराज गंगाराम अहिर जी फार्मर जस्टिस सुप्रीम कोर्ट श्री संजय किशन कौल जी मेरी जिनसे पहली मुलाकात के बाद फिर प्रियदर्शनी से मुलाकात हुई और उनके अंदर मैंने एक जज्बा देखा कि इस देश के संविधान और संवैधानिक व्यवस्थाओं में जो लोग अपना योगदान दे रहे हैं उनको प्रेरित करने का और इन व्यवस्थाओं को बनाए रखने में उनकी वाकई में इतनी उत्कंठ इच्छा थी उसको देख करके मैं भी बहुत प्रेरित हुआ ऐसे हमारे प्राइम पॉइंट फाउंडेशन के संरक्षक कहूँगा मैं ऐसे आदरणीय श्री श्रीनिवासन जी और उन्होंने अपना जो चेयरमैन अपने बाद चुना <laughs> जिसको अध्यक्ष चुना वास्तव में उनका निर्णय बहुत ही अच्छा था प्रियदर्शनी राहुल से मैं कई बार मिला हूँ उनके अंदर लगातार काम करने की जो अथक क्षमता है योग्यता है ऐसी सम्मानित अध्यक्ष यहाँ पर मेरे बहुत सारे सम्मानित सांसदगण मौजूद हैं बहुत सारे वरिष्ठ साथी हैं हमारे मुख्य विपक्षी दल के लोकसभा में हमारे नेता श्री अधीर रंजन चौधरी जी हैं इनको आज सम्मानित किया जाना है लेकिन आप थोड़ा भी टेंशन में थे खुश रहिए भाभी जी बगल में बैठी है ना मैं भाभी जी से मिला था बहुत उनका हम लोगों एक बार पब्लिक अकाउंट कमेटी का मैं मेंबर था तो उस दौरान आपके साथ में जाने को अवसर मिला एक बहन की तरह एक संरक्षक की तरह उन्होंने पूरी टीम को जिस तरह से उस लंबे दौरे में संभाला था मैं उनका भी अभिनंदन करता हूँ यहाँ पर सुप्रिया सूले जी हैं भरथरी मेहताब साहब हैं सुधीर गुप्ता जी हैं हमारे एम के प्रेमचंदन बहुत सारे हमारे सभी साथी हैं वारणे साहब सभी लोगों को मैं जानता हूं और सब ने अपने अपने कामों से वास्तव में पार्लियामेंट में बहुत अच्छा योगदान किया है मैं इस अवसर पर जब आज उनको सम्मानित किया जाना है मैं उनको बहुत बहुत बधाई देता हूं और इसी तरह से वो देश और राष्ट्र के निर्माण में अपना योगदान करते रहें उसके लिए मैं उनको बहुत सारी शुभकामनाएँ भी देता हूँ साथ ही साथ मैं आभार व्यक्त करता हूं प्राइम पॉइंट फाउंडेशंस का जिन्होंने जैसी मेरी जानकारी है देश के पूर्व राष्ट्रपति श्री अब्दुल कलाम साहब से प्रेरित होकर के इस सम्मान को प्रारंभ किया था मुझे भी एक बार मौका मिला है मुझे भी संसद रत्न का अवार्ड शायद 2019 में मिला था हा? 2000 ट्वेंटी वन में दो हज़ार इक्कीस में तो इस दृष्टि से मैं इस फाउंडेशन से जुड़ा उनके बारे में जानकारियां हुई बहुत ही पवित्र उद्देश्य के साथ वो राष्ट्र की सेवा करने का काम कर रहे हैं मैं फाउंडेशन के प्रेरणता श्री श्रीनिवासन जी प्रियदर्शनी राहुल और उनकी टीम के सभी लोगों को बहुत बहुत आभार व्यक्त करते हुए उनका भी बहुत बहुत अभिनंदन करता हूँ मुझे जब इस अवार्ड से सम्मानित होने का अवसर मिला तो मैंने प्राइम पॉइंट फाउंडेशन के विषय में जानकारियां भी इकट्ठा की वाकई में उनका जो उद्देश्य था जैसे हम जानते हैं हमारा देश संवैधानिक व्यवस्थाओं से चलने वाला एक लोकतांत्रिक देश है और अलग अलग विचारों से अलग अलग क्षेत्रों से अलग अलग फिलासफी लेकर के हम सब सदन में आते हैं लेकिन सबका उद्देश्य एक होता है राष्ट्र को आगे बढ़ाना राष्ट्र के हित में और देश के लोगों के हित में हम लोगों की क्या भूमिका होनी चाहिए उस दृष्टि से हमारे सभी सांसदगण प्रयास करते हैं और उसके परिणाम भी आते हैं हम सब ने देखा जैसे भी जस्टिस कौल साहब कह रहे थे कि हमारा लोकतंत्र प्रमुख रूप से 
जिन व्यवस्थाओं पे है जिनका हस्तक्षेप रहता है उसमें जुडिशरी की भी बड़ी भूमिका होती है और अगर हम देखेंगे तो हमारे देश में पहले आम चुनाव के पहले ही टकराहट भी होती है व्यवस्थाएं होती हैं तो टकराव भी होता है देश में आम चुनाव से पहले ही संविधान में पहला संशोधन आया था वो भी एक संयोग है कि मद्रास उच्च न्यायालय के एक निर्णय के खिलाफ ही आया था और पंडित जवाहरलाल नेहरू चुनाव से पहले उन्नीस में 18 जून उन्नीस को वो संविधान संशोधन देश की पार्लियामेंट में लेके आए थे उसको पास कराया था तो ये सामान्य सी बातें हैं कहीं पे पार्लियामेंट इस तरह के निर्णय लेती है जुडिशरी के कई निर्णय होते हैं जिनको हम लोग सम्मान भी करते हैं कई बार ऐसी स्थितियाँ आती हैं कि उनको परिवर्तन करने के लिए कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन में भी अमेंडमेंट करने पड़ते हैं आम तौर पर जब ये देश का संविधान बना था तो पूरी दुनिया में भारत के संविधान को एक अलग तरह से लिया गया था भारत के संविधान के विषय में उस देश उस समय दुनिया के बहुत सारे देशों के बड़े बड़े विद्वानों ने ये कहा कि संविधान इतना लचीला इतना विस्तार से सभी समस्याओं को समेटे हुए और राष्ट्र के सभी लोगों को किस तरह से उनके साथ न्याय हो सके वो सारा कुछ इस संविधान में है लेकिन फिर भी एक प्राविधान ये भी था कि जहां कहीं आवश्यकता हो और देश हित और देश के लोगों के हित में जब जरूरी होता है तो संविधान का संशोधन करने का भी प्राविधान किया गया था उस दृष्टि से संक्षेप में मैं कहूं तो हमारे दस वर्ष की सरकार ने प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में केवल आठ संविधान संशोधन किए और वो आठों संविधान संशोधन आप सब जानते होंगे किन किन विषयों के लिए किए हैं बहुत ही ऐसे विषय थे जिनको संविधान संशोधन करने की आवश्यकता थी और लगभग पूरे सदन ने हर संविधान संशोधन में अपनी सहमति दी इसी तरह से उन्होंने संविधान के चौथे अध्याय के अनुच्छेद 36 से इक्यावन तक उसमें नीति निर्देशक सिद्धांत है किसी भी गवर्नमेंट पर वो बाध्यकारी नहीं है लेकिन उनका उपयोग देश के लोगों के जीवन में सकारात्मक परिवर्तन आए और दुनिया के साथ हमारे देश के कैसे संबंध हो वो इस अध्याय में वर्णन है उसका प्रयोग भी हमारी सरकार ने श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में राष्ट्र और राष्ट्र के लोगों के विकास के लिए और अंतर्राष्ट्रीय संबंधों नीतियों और नियमों का पालन करने में बहुत अच्छी तरह से प्रयोग किया है लेकिन ये सारी बातें जब पार्लियामेंट से निकल करके आती हैं तो उसमें सबसे बड़ी और महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका हमारे सांसदों की होती है ऐसे बाहर से देख करके केवल इतना लगता है कि सांसद की भूमिका केवल पार्लियामेंट में है पार्लियामेंट में क्वेश्चन उठाना नियमों के साथ बहस करना अलग अलग बिल्स पर बहस करना अपने विचारों को रखना ये एक विषय है लेकिन उसके साथ साथ जब हम पार्लियामेंट्री कमेटी में होते हैं तो उसमें किसी दल का सदस्य ना हो कि उस कमेटी के सदस्य के रूप में जो भी निर्णय होते हैं उन निर्णयों को लेने में भी हमारे सांसदों की बड़ी भूमिका होती है वो भी मेरे ख्याल में सम, ये जो सम्मान दिया जा रहा है उसमें कमेटी में भी आपका रोल क्या होता है संसदीय जो समितियाँ होती हैं वो भी शायद एक मेरे ख्याल में पॉइंट है तो इस दृष्टि से और उसके बाद खासकर लोकसभा के जो सांसद होते हैं उनकी अपने क्षेत्र के प्रति भी बड़ी प्रतिबद्धता होती है बड़ी जिम्मेदारी होती है उस दृष्टि से उनकी भूमिका अपने क्षेत्र से लेकर के पार्लियामेंट और पार्लियामेंट से लेकर के कमेटी के माध्यम से राज्यों और राष्ट्र सबके साथ समन्वय बना करके इस देश के हित में कैसे सकारात्मक काम किए जा सकते हैं उसमें बहुत बड़ी भूमिका हमारे सांसदों की होती है अगर हम कहेंगे तो लोकसभा राज्यसभा राष्ट्रपति ये मिला करके पार्लियामेंट बनता है 
और उसमें हमारे सांसदों ने जो आज जिनको सम्मान मिलने जा रहा है उनका बहुत बड़ा योगदान रहा है हमारे यहाँ पर कई लोग बैठे हैं सुधीर गुप्ता जी हैं सिन्हा साहब हैं इन लोगों को जब हम बोलते हुए देखते हैं तो बहुत कुछ सीखने का अवसर भी हम लोगों को मिलता है एम के प्रेमचंदन साहब हैं भले वो बोलते हैं हमेशा हमारे खिलाफ हैं लेकिन इतने अच्छे तरीके से बोलते हैं कि जब वो बोलना शुरू करते हैं तो मैं सुनने जरूर आता हूँ ऐसे अधीर रंजन साहब हैं जब बोलते हैं मेरे उनके व्यक्तिगत रिश्ते बहुत अच्छे हैं लेकिन उनको भी मैं सुनने का कोई मौका छोड़ता नहीं इस दृष्टि से अगर देखें तो अलग अलग सांसदों महताब साहब को तो मेरे ख्याल में सदन के आधे से ज़्यादा लोग सुनने के लिए आते ही तो इस दृष्टि से बड़ी भूमिका आप सबकी है आप सबका आज सम्मान हो रहा है मुझे अंदर से बहुत खुशी हो रही है मैं आप सबका बहुत हृदय से अभिनंदन करता हूँ और इसी तरह राष्ट्र के निर्माण में आपका निरंतर योगदान बना रहे आप स्वस्थ रहें आप इसी तरह से योगदान करते रहें इसके लिए मैं बहुत सारी आपको शुभकामनाएं देता हूं, बधाई देता हूं और खासकर आपके प्राइम पॉइंट फाउंडेशन को मैं अलग से आप श्रीनिवासन जी का विदर्शनी जी और उनकी टीम को बहुत बहुत अभिनंदन करते हुए उनका आभार व्यक्त करता हूं, उनकी भूमिका बहुत बड़ी है और उस भूमिका का निर्वहन करके वो राष्ट्र की बहुत बड़ी सेवा कर रहे हैं मैं उनको आभार व्यक्त करते हुए आप सबको पुनः बधाई देते हुए बहुत सारी मेरी शुभकामनाएं हैं धन्यवाद थैंक यू सर फॉर दिस वंडरफुल वर्ड्स ऑफ विजडम एंड कमिटमेंट टू द पब्लिक मे आई नाउ इनवाइट मैडम डॉक्टर तमिलसाई सौंदर राजन जी ऑनरेबल गवर्नर ऑफ तेलंगाना एंड ऑनरेबल लेफ्टिनेंट गवर्नर ऑफ पुडुचेरी टू डिलीवर द स्पीच A special good morning to each and every one here. First of all, I congratulate all the awardees, and my respects to Sri Hans Hansiraj Ji, Sri Ajay Kumar Mishra Ji, Sri Justice Sanjay Kishan Kohl Ji, Prime Point Sri Nivasan Ji, Priya Darshini Rahul Ji, and all the other esteemed dignitaries, parliamentarians, and the. awardees who have assembled here my dear press personnel and security personnel i was surprised when i was called for this program because all the dignitaries who have assembled here in the dais are best parliamentarians and now they are going to award the best parliamentarians then what is the role for me here i am neither a member of legislative assembly or member of parliament but i have been asked to come here as the most powerful person don't think i have come here because i am the governor i am telling the i am the powerful person i am one among the 125 crores approximately voter so as a powerful voter i have come here to who is selecting the our parliamentarians and this is the second award to them because already their constituency people have awarded them to be their leader and as if you are running out of time i want to stress upon only two to three things first of all i thank the present parliament and the honorable prime minister and the other leaders for passing the 33% women reservation bill and i am very proud that it has been assented by a women president so in spite of so much of struggle only women parliament even politicians will know the struggle of being a women whether it is constitutional post or parliament or a political person and i am really very happy and even though i am very happy when i read about the list of awardees i think only madam supriya sole is the single women in that list ah uh, uh, Two, three are there. Yeah. Hina Kavinji, but in spite of that, number is limited. So my thought is, whatever may be the political situation, 
the party should give more recognition to the women leaders our great bharati says nimirnda nannadai neergonda paarvai nilathil yaarukku manjada gnanacharuk women will stand straight look straight and they will grab the opportunities when it is given to them but opportunities to be given to them and i am not telling only because of reservation you have to give them an opportunity is given to women definitely they will exemplify bharadasan says pili illai pani illai en kudumbathil enendal en kudumbam manaviyal arasalvadali what he says there is no any debt or disease in my family because my wife is ruling the family like women are ruling the uh, politics if they are given representations they will exemplify in their service to the people so i am really very happy that i have been called in a situation where the women reservation bill has been passed and i am thankful to each and every one of us of you for that and another concern is the voting percentage definitely because i am from the south chennai constituency of chennai and it is a constituency where more educated population are there but in spite of that the voting percentage was only 50% that is the most educated constituency but less percentage of voting so all our the people in politics are parliamentarian our responsibility is to increase the percentage of voting particularly motivate them to vote the youngsters to vote and the holiday given for voting should be utilized by the citizens only for voting once i was during the election time i saw some of the families in the airport i told tomorrow is voting and you are all going no no this holiday no so we are going uh, for a holiday trip because it's a holiday and i requested the election commission don't uh, uh, have the election date on monday or friday otherwise they are combining these two days and they are traveling not voting so this everything should be taken care because only on 50% is not voting then what is the judgment they have on the voters so these are the simple things the parliamentarians should concentrate and our tirukural says vellathanayadu malarneetam maandarku ullathanayadu uyarvu a lotus flowers according to the level of the water like that the performance is according to the mindset and the performance of the parliamentarians and they have risen to this level to receive this award and when they receive the awards i am really very happy as prime pond srinivasan said this has been endorsed as our honorable president of india is have invited all these awards to rashtrapati bhavan and this is a great endorsement for this organization and the assignment by you has been endorsed by the highest office of this country and the parliamentarians also because each and every year when they are awarded there will be some motivation whatever may be the topmost person there will be motivation if awards are given and another appeal i want to bring out here is motivate not only women motivate more youngsters to come to politics nowadays politics they think the youngsters think that it is easy but it is not easy in a lighter sense i always say one person one child came and one small boy went to his father and told appa i want to become a doctor then appa told no no then you prepare for neat i will give you some tuition then he told no pa i will enter politics then automatically i will get some university to be awarded a doctorate so he thinks it's so easy but it is difficult but in this difficult field each and every one have to be there to make the people smile and parliamentarians because the whole even myself view the parliament three televisions only so the parliamentarians how they deal as our sri justice told during the debates how they are performing themselves it is viewed by all the people of the country so you should set an example how you are going to be a role model to the rest of the young politicians in the country and whatever may be the challenges and whatever may be the problems you put forth and whichever may be the constituency you are selected the final goal is to see the smiles in the face of the people 
whatever may be the office, whether it is governor's office or a panchayat office or parliamentary office or state office, it is the smile which we see on the face of the people is the ultimate goal for which we are all working. As our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji rightly emphasized that parliament represents the dreams and voices of 125 crore Indians he, uh, so that we, each and every Indian should be taken care of by the parliamentarians. And I am really very happy to be here and as I said, I am a very small person to uh, give the awards to the uh, parliamentarians. But whatever may be the challenges given to women, I always say, because when I became the governor of Telangana, some of the critics came forward and told, she's the youngest person, how she's going to manage the newborn state. I told I'm a gynecologist. Gynecologists are good in managing the newborn babies. So Telangana is a newborn state, so I will manage. So when I was given an additional charge, okay, okay, she managed Telangana. When I was given an additional charge as Lieutenant Governor of Puducherry, then immediately the same critics came forward. Oh, she's the youngest governor, how she, okay, okay, she managed Telangana. How she's going to manage Puducherry? Then I told as gynecologist, I can manage if a singleton baby is born. And I can manage if twin babies are also born. So twin babies are born. Why I am telling? This confidence is given to me, not because I am a politician's daughter. It's an entirely different story. My father was a PCC president and he was a congressman. 25 years back, I joined BJP and with my own efforts, I came, uh, became as a president of that party and now I am the governor. Why I am telling the confidence is given to me, I gained this confidence because of my education. So my request is give empowerment to the women, give education to women, women give representation to the women. That will empower the country. As our great Swami Vivekananda said, for a country to fly, the women wing and also the men wing should fly equally so that the country can fly high. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your encouraging words. May I now invite Sri Hans Raj Ahirji, Chairman, National Commission for Backward Classes, to deliver his address. हमारे देश में जो संस्था एक बहुत बड़ा काम कर रही है प्राइम पॉइंट चेन्नई में रहकर आपने देश के सबसे बड़े पार्लियामेंट हाउस के लिए जो निगरानी रखी है ऐसी संस्था के द्वारा आयोजित संसद रत्न अवार्ड 2024 के इस आयोजन में उपस्थित जिन्होंने अभी विचार रखे हैं हमारे तेलंगाना स्टेट की गवर्नर सम्मान्य डॉक्टर श्रीमती तमिल साई सुंदर राजन जी और मंच पर बैठे हमारे सहयोगी रहे सम्मान्य होम मिनिस्टर एमएस होम सी अजय कुमार मिश्रा जी सम्मान्य जस्टिस श्री संजय किशन कौल जी और जिन्होंने कार्यक्रम का आयोजन किया है वर्षों से प्राइम पॉइंट का काम करते हैं सलमान ने हमारे श्रीनिवासन जी प्रियदर्शनी जी और सभी यहाँ पर इतने बड़े अवार्ड भी बैठे हैं पहले भी अवार्ड जिन्होंने लिया है संसद अवार्ड और उनके साथ मैंने भी काम किया है लोकसभा में सभी सम्मान्य आदरणीय भ्रतहरी मेहताब जी अधीर रंजन जी हमारे महाराष्ट्र के बहन सुप्रिया सुले जी श्रीरंग बारने जी अमोल कोले जी श्रीकांत जी सिंधे प्रेमचंद्रन जी मुझे बड़ी खुशी हो रही है कि यहाँ पर मुझे नाम पड़ रहा था और भी कुछ नाम है हमारे साथी और बड़ा अच्छा लग रहा है मुझे मैं महाराष्ट्र से आता हूँ तो देश में महाराष्ट्र का भी हमारे सांसदों का अच्छा योगदान है देश के सभी सांसदों का योगदान यहाँ पर अभी प्राइम पॉइंट ने सिद्ध कर दिया है प्राइम पॉइंट जो संस्था जो काम करती है आपने मुझे भी अवार्ड दिया है मुझे इसीलिए आपने यहाँ बुलाया लेकिन पार्लियामेंट ये देश का बहुत बड़ा एक मंदिर है 
लोकतंत्र का इस लोकतंत्र के मंदिर में काम करते समय में इसका महत्व हमने तब भी देखा होगा 2014 में जब प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी चुनकर आए थे तो सबसे पहले उन्होंने पार्लियामेंट के सामने आकर उसके पायरी के दर्शन लिए जमीन पे छूकर और तब पार्लियामेंट में उन्होंने कदम रखा और उन्होंने कहा भी कि पार्लियामेंट एक लोकतंत्र का मंदिर है और संविधान ये देश का राष्ट्रीय ग्रंथ है धर्म ग्रंथ है इन दो बातों को हमने देखा तो पार्लियामेंट में लोकतंत्र की पूजा होती है लोकतंत्र का महत्व अगर हमने समझा तो ये पार्लियामेंट उसका सबसे बड़ा एक कार्य क्षेत्र है और देश की 140 करोड़ जनता को न्याय देने वाला सभागृह जो है उसमें काम करने वाले सांसद जिन्हें आप अवार्ड दे रहे हैं उन सभी सांसदों को मैं बधाई देता हूँ और अभिनंदन करता हूँ आप लोगों का सभी का कि आप सही उतरे हैं आपने आपके पद की जिम्मेदारी को समझा है पार्लियामेंट मेंबर एक गरिमा में पद होता है और उसके अपने सम्मान में जो भी लोकसभा में काम किया है ये पूरा रिकॉर्ड होता है ऐसा नहीं कि यहाँ के प्राइम पॉइंट के लोगों ने किसी स्टेट को महत्व देते हुए काम किया है किसी व्यक्ति को महत्व देते हुए काम किया है ये मैं नहीं मानता ये तो पूरा रिकॉर्ड होता है साइट पर आता है और सभी को उन्होंने चुन उसके पूरा अनालिस करते हुए इस अवार्ड का चयन किया है इसलिए यहाँ पर सभी लोगों को जिन्होंने बहुत ही ईमानदारी से अपना काम किया है उन लोगों का अवार्ड मिल रहा है और मैं समझता हूँ कि देश के लिए सबसे बड़ी बात यह है कि आज भी हमारे पार्लियामेंट की गरिमाओं को हमने बनाए रखा है कुछ लोगों की धारणा ये होती है कि पार्लियामेंट में कभी हल्ला होता है हवल्ला होता है किसी विषय को लेकर मैंने भी कई बार लोकसभा में जीतने के बाद में हो अल्लाह हमें भी करना पड़ा था किसी स्कैम को लेके किया है यहाँ बैठे लोग हैं हमारे सांसद सदस्य हैं तो कभी कोल घोटाला निकला था तो मैं स्वयं यहाँ बैठा हूँ कि मैं तीन लोकसभा में तीन सेशन में हमने इसका हल्ला किया था हल्ला करने का अर्थ ही नहीं होता कि पार्लियामेंट चलने नहीं दे रही है एक शस्त्र है हथियार है उसकी भी एक मर्यादा होती है और मर्यादा में रह काम करने के हमें डिबेट में हिस्सा लेना है क्वेश्चन लगाना है बिल लगाना है थ्री सेवन सेवन है जीरो आवर है एक हथियार है इन सारे हथियारों का वेपन का यूज करते हुए जो आदमी काम करते हैं कितने बार डिबेट में हिस्सा लिया है कितने क्वेश्चन लगे हैं कितने बिल लगे हैं और अपनी बॉडी लैंग्वेज क्या है क्वेश्चन का चयन क्या है इन सारी चीज़ों को निगरानी रखने वाली प्राइम पॉइंट मैं ये कहता हूँ कि प्राइम पॉइंट के बारे में तीसरी आँखें हैं लोकतंत्र पर नजर नजर रखना लोकसभा में क्या काम चल रहा है पार्लियामेंट में राज्यसभा में क्या काम चल रहा है अभी तो आप कमेटियों का भी काम देखते हैं पार्लियामेंट्री कमेटी का इन सारों पे नजर नजर रखते हुए आपने लोकतंत्र को मजबूत करने का प्रयास किया है मैं तो समझता हूँ आपने स्पर्धक बना दिए है पूरे पाँच लोकसभा के मेम्बर अब ये कॉम्पिटिशन कर रहे हैं राज्यसभा के भी मेम्बर अब देखते हैं कि हम कितना अच्छा काम कर सकते इसलिए जो काम सिर्फ सरकार ने करनी चाहिए ये भावना न रखते हुए किसी एक एनजीओ ने काम किया है इसलिए प्राइम पॉइंट श्री की संस्थाएं देश को मजबूत बनाती है लोकतंत्र को मजबूत बनाती है और ये मजबूती बहुत जरूरी है क्योंकि तो 140 करोड़ देश की आबादी का देश है सात लाख से अधिक है विलेज है गाँव है अनेक स्टेट है अनेक भाषा रहन सहन अलग है खान पान अलग है देश की सीमाएं देखे तो पंद्रह हजार करोड़ सीमा उसकी रक्षा से लेते हुए अंदर की इंटरनल सिक्योरिटी को लेते हुए बॉर्डर के सिक्योरिटी देखते हुए सारे क्वेश्चन लोकसभा में जब आते हैं बातें होती है तो सरकार पे दबाव आता है सरकार दिशा में काम करती है करना पड़ता है क्योंकि तो जिन लोगों को हमने चुन के भेजा है और बीस लाख से अधिक वोट चुन के देते हैं तो इन सभी सांसदों का मैं बहुत अभिनंदन करता हूं कि आपने उन 20 लाख वोटों का सम्मान किया है कि आपने पार्लियामेंट में अच्छा काम किया है ये बहुत गरिमा में पद होता है मैं अपने आप को देख के नहीं कह रहा हूं हमने सब काम किया है मैं ये नहीं कह रहा कि सब पार्लियामेंट के मेंबर काम अच्छा ही करने का प्रयास करते हैं 
लेकिन जो इश्यू रहता है अपने क्षेत्र में होता है जिले में होता है उस इश्यू पर जब लोकसभा में बोला जाता है तो वो इश्यू सिर्फ लोकसभा का नहीं होता है मैंने देखा है कई बार लोग उसको समर्थन भी देते हैं पूरे देश के अब यहाँ पर मैं देख रहा हूँ केरला से लेके तो श्री अपने हमारे जम्मू कश्मीर के भी सांसद भाई बैठे हुए हैं पूरा देश यहाँ बैठा हुआ है इसका अर्थ यह है कि एक इश्यू जब किसी लोकसभा में मिलता है तो वो पूरे देश को लागू होता है अब वहाँ अमेंडमेंट होता है कई बिल आते हैं अमेंडमेंट के लिए आते हैं कई लोग हिस्सा लेते हैं अपने अपने विचार रखते हैं मैंने देखा एक बात कि जब लैंड इक्वेशन बिल आया था जिसके लिए मैं बहुत लड़ता था काफ़ी प्रयास करता था मैं नौ बार लोकसभा में विषय लगाया था एक उदाहरण दे रहा मैं आपको लैंड इक्वेशन जो है नाइनटीन ये देश के लिए किसानों का शोषण करता था और इशू मेरे यहाँ बहुत बड़ा था कोल माइंस के लिए लैंड इक्वेशन होती थी बहुत छोटा सा इसमें रेट मिलता था और इम्प्लीमेंट नहीं मिलता था मैंने काफ़ी लड़ाई लड़ी उसमें लिए सफलता मिली क्यों मिली कि लोकसभा में जो इशू लगते थे उस पर विचार हुआ और मजबूरन पुरानी सरकार को उस पर कमेटी बनाई गई कमेटी ने जिसमें आदरणीय हमारे स्पीकर रही सुमित्रा महाजन जी उसके चेयरमैन भी रही है और उसमें अमेंडमेंट हुआ एक पुराना जहरीला कानून जो था 1894 का लैंड एजुकेशन एक्ट वो अमेंडमेंट हो गया अभी अभी नया बन गया 2013 ला रहा है ये पूरे देश के किसानों को लाभ मिला है एक इशू चंद्रपुर लोकसभा से निकला लेकिन देश के पूरे स्टेट को इसका लाभ हुआ ऐसे कई बातें होती है मैं उदाहरण दिया ये पार्लियामेंट एक बहुत बड़ी ताकत है और उसको अगर कोई श्रद्धा से काम करता है तो आप लोग हैं आप लोगों ने काम किया आपकी गरिमा को समझा है मैं आपको लोकसभा के ये सही पार्लियामेंट मेंबर भी मानता हूँ एक जब मैं लोकसभा में पहली बार गया था 96 में तो काफ़ी परेशानी होती थी लेकिन जैसे समझा हम लोगों को लोकसभा रहे या विधानसभा रहे कोई भी हाउस रहे जब समझते है आदमी को तो लगता है कि वहां का विद्यार्थी हूं और विद्यार्थी बनके बैठना पड़ता है और लेक्चरर भी बनके बनना पड़ता है दो बातें हैं ये हमारा जो रोल है ये लेक्चरर का भी रोल है और स्टूडेंट का भी रोल है दोनों बातें लेके हम लोगों ने काम किया ईमानदारी से काम किया तो ये अवार्ड से आप वंचित नहीं रह सकते हैं ये अवार्ड आपको नहीं मिल रहा है ये अवार्ड काम को नहीं मिल रहा है जो प्रधानमंत्री जो अपने देश के संविधान में जो बना है जो संविधान हमें देश के लाड़ के पुत्र लाड़ले पुत्र रत्न भारत रत्न डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब अम्बेडकर जी ने जो दिया है कि लोकतंत्र का सबसे बड़ा संविधान एक गंत्र बना है ये प्रधानमंत्री ने बार बार कहा है उस संविधान की हम पूजा कर रहे हैं और उसको नतमस्तक होकर आप काम कर रहे हैं देश के हर कोने का सब्जेक्ट जब यहाँ लोकसभा में आता है तो समझ लो कि यहाँ वाकई में जो हमें लोकतंत्र को संभाल के रखना है तो हम उसको निश्चित ही आप पूजा कर रहे हैं और इसी के चलते बरसों से जो हमारा प्रश्न प्रलंबित है कई प्रश्न थे वो शायद बांग्लादेश के बॉर्डर हो या पाकिस्तान की सीमा पे चलने आतंकवाद हो या कश्मीर सरी का थ्री सेवन जीरो का इश्यू हो या महिलाओं के लिए तीन तलाक का सब्जेक्ट हो कितने बड़े बड़े इशू लोकतंत्र के माध्यम से सरकारों ने सरकार ने यूनानी मसली हल कर दी है यही जीत होती है लोकतंत्र की बार बार मैंने सुना गृह मंत्री जी ने कहा कि अस्थायी रूप से थ्री सेवन जीरो लगा था ये बात सब सामने आई कभी तो प्रश्न में किसी लोकसभा के संसद ने विषय रखा वो लोकसभा में यह अस्थायी था हटाने में बहुत कठिनाई नहीं, नहीं थी एक समय आया हट गया लेकिन लोकतंत्र के माध्यम से हटा है यहां कोई जबरन नहीं हुआ है ना राम मंदिर जबरन बना है ना थ्री सेवन जीरो जबरन बना है तीन तलाक के लिए भी सरकार ने कई बार लोकसभा में बिल लाया है कई बार अमेंडमेंट आता गया और सभी ने माना तभी उसको सरकार ने लागू किया ये, ये लोकतंत्र के माध्यम से सबसे बड़ी बातें होती है तो जो बिल आते हैं अमेंडमेंट आते हैं यूनानी मसले होते हैं तो बहुत अच्छी बात है पार्लियामेंट में लोकसभा में उसमें आप लोग हिस्सा लेते हैं और इस तरीके से हिस्सा लेने वालों का यहाँ कितना आपने काम किया इसका रिकॉर्ड होता है 
और उसी को लेकर ही यहाँ पर प्राइम पेंशन की संस्था जो देश के लिए सेवा कर रही है लोकतंत्र की उसको मैं बताई देता हूँ आपने सही दिशा चुनी है 2010 से आप काम कर रहे हैं तभी से मैं आपसे जुड़ा हूँ और इस संस्था को सबसे बड़ी बात एक है कि ये देश के महा महिम रहे राष्ट्रपति महोदय डॉक्टर ए पी अब्दुल कलाम जी का आशीर्वाद इस संस्था को था पहले तो पहले बार जब हमें अवार्ड मिला तो उन्होंने हमें मोबाइल से स्पीड दिया था हमें बधाई दी थी और उस लिए मैं जानता हूँ कि इस संस्था को बहुत बड़े विभूतियों का आशीर्वाद है और आप सही दिशा में काम कर रहे हैं ये काम देश के लोकतंत्र को मजबूत जरूर करेगा लेकिन अच्छे सांसद बनाएगा शुभकामनाएं धन्यवाद थैंक यू सो मच फॉर शेयरिंग योर इन एक्सपीरियंस एंड विशेस फॉर ऑल सर नाउ वी हैव कम टू द मच अवेटेड प्रेजेंटेशन सेरेमनी हैज वी इनवाइट द अवार्ड विनर्स वी रिक्वेस्ट देम टू कम टू द स्टेज एंड रिसीव द सन Ratna awards from our esteemed chief guests. We have three categories that is Sansad Ratna Award, Sansad Maharatna Award and Sansad Utkrisht Maharatna Award. First, we are starting with the Sansad Ratna Awards. This is an annual award for outstanding performance in the Lok Sabha. Five parliamentarians are honored with the Sansad Ratna Awards 2024. They are getting this award for their outstanding performance under initiated debates, private members bills and questions during the 17th Lok Sabha. We congratulate all the award winners. May I May I now invite Dr. Sukanta Majumdar ji, BJP, West Bengal, to receive the Sansad Ratna Award. May I invite Shri Kuldeep Rai Sharma ji, Indian National Congress, Andaman and Nicobar Islands, to receive the Sansad Ratna Award 2024. May I invite Shri Sudhir Gupta ji, BJP, Madhya Pradesh, to receive the Sansad Ratna Award 2024. invite Dr Amol Ram Singh Kole ji NCP Maharashtra to receive the Sansad Ratna Award 2024 May I invite Dr. Shrikant Eknath Shinde ji, Shiv Sena, Maharashtra, to receive the Sansad Ratna Award 2024. Next, we are inviting Sansad Maharatna Award winners. Four parliamentarians and three parliamentary committees receive this award for their outstanding and consistent performance in the 17th Lok Sabha. 
This award is given once in five years at the end of each Lok Sabha. For the first time, we are giving Sansad Maharatna Awards to committees for their consistent performance. Congratulations to all the Sansad Maharatna awardees. May we invite Sri N.K. Premachandran Ji, RSP Kerala, to receive the Sansad Maharatna Award for the 17th Lok Sabha. May we invite Sri Adiranjan Chaudhary Ji, Indian National Congress, West Bengal, to receive the Sansad Maharatna Award for 17th Lok Sabha. invite Sri Bidyat Baran Mehtoji, BJP Jharkhand to receive the Sansad Maharatna Award for 17th Lok Sabha. Now invite Dr. Hina Vijay Kumar Kavichi, BJP, Maharashtra, to receive the Sansad Maharatna Award for 17th Lok Sabha. We invite Sri Jayan Sinha Ji, Honorable Chairman of Finance Committee, to receive the Sansat Maharatna Award for the committee's 17th Lok Sabha. Present Finance Committee members may also join. We invite Sri Gatti Gaudaji, Honorable Chairman of the Agriculture Committee, to receive the Sansad Maharatna Award for the committee's 17th Lok Sabha. Present Agriculture Committee members may also join. We invite Sri Vijay Sai Reddy Ji, Honorable Chairman, and Sri T. G. Venkatesh Ji, Honorable Past Chairman of Transport, Tourism, and Culture Committee to receive the Sansad Maharatna Award for the committee's 17th Lok Sabha. Present members of this committee may also join.
Congratulations to all award winners for your continued performance. We will now move on to the Sansad Utkrisht Maharatna Award category. This is the highest level of award for outstanding performance in the parliament that can be received only once in 10 years. Three parliamentarians received this award. They were the Sansad Maharatna Award winners of 16th Lok Sabha for their consistent performance. They continued their consistent performance in the 17th Lok Sabha also to get the top ranking. In view of this, we have introduced this new category to those who consistently perform in two Lok Sabhas. We congratulate the three Sansad Utkrisht Maharatna Award winners. May I invite Sri Bhatru Hari Mahatabji, BJD, Udisa to receive the Sansad Utkrisht Maharatna Award for both 16th and 17th Lok Sabha. May I invite Sri Mati Supriya Suleji, NCP Maharashtra, to receive the Sansad Utkrisht Maharatna Award for both 16th and 17th Lok Sabha. May I invite Shri Shirang Appa Barneji, Shiv Sena, Maharashtra, to receive the Sansad Utkrisht Maharatna Award for 16th and 17th Lok Sabha. Congratulations to all the outstanding parliamentarians of 17th Lok Sabha. Let us give a standing ovation to all the award winners of 2024. May we please request the award recipients to please come over to the dais with your citations for a group photograph, please. May we request the Honourable MPs to please come over to the dais with your citations for a group photograph.
I beg my pardon, we'll do it without the citations because I think it, it is quite larger for us to accommodate. Let's do it without the citation, please. Request us. May we request our sponsors who have shown their support to come to the stage and receive their memento. May we please request the honorable members to please be seated. May we please request the honorable members to please be seated. We are in the closure of the event. May we please request the members to be seated. Let's close the event. May we request our sponsors who have shown their support to come to the stage and receive their memento. Main sponsor, Sri Deepak Kapoor, Assistant General Manager, Canara Bank. May we request our sponsors who have shown their support to come to the stage and receive their memento. Main sponsor, Sri Deepak Kapoor, Assistant General Manager, Canada Bank. Co-sponsor, Sri Vikas Arya, Secretary Arya Samaj. Main sponsor, Sri Deepak Kapoor, Assistant General Manager, Canada Bank. Uh, Co-sponsors, Sri Vikas Arya, Secretary Arya Samaj Educational Society, DAV Groups of Schools, Chennai. Mr. Rajiv Bagga, India Head, DBS Bank. who has always been a pillar of strength to our team to receive his memento.
May I invite Shri Umesh Chandra, who has always been a pillar of strength to our team, to receive his memento. As a mark of our respect and adoration, may we present a memento to our dignitaries. I request you, Sridhar Raji, to present the memento to Honorable Justice, Sri S.K. Kolji. I request Vardha Rajanji to present the memento to Honorable Minister Shri Ajay Mishraji. I request Priya Darshini Rahul Ma'am to present the memento to Honorable Governor Madam Dr. Tamilisai Sondha Rajanji. I invite Shri Anurula, Governing Council Member, to propose a vote of thanks. I invite Prime Point Srinivasan Ji to present the memento to Honorable Sri Hansraj Ahir Ji. I invite Sri R. Nurula, Governing Council member, to propose a vote of thanks. Honorable dignitaries on the stage, award winning parliamentarians, guests, and media persons, I am extremely delighted to propose a vote of thanks to all those who have made this event a grand success. I thank Honorable Sri Hansraj Ahirji for accepting our invitation. He is the pattern of our committee and we are privileged to get this continuous support. I also thank Honorable Governor Dr. Tamilisai Saundararajan for accepting our invitation when Srinivasan called Madam on phone. She is known for her simplicity. I also thank Ms. Sri Ajay Mishraji for sparing his valuable time despite the various political meetings. I thank the jury committee members and screening committee members for their guidance. I thank Honorable Justice Sri Sanjay Kishan Kaulji for his valuable time and his wonderful keynote address. While I congratulate all the award-winning parliamentarians, I thank them for their participation. The award winners make the nation proud. I thank all the invitees, guests, media persons, and Doordarshan for honoring us by accepting our invitation. I also thank senior officials of New Maharashtra Southern and the students, teachers, and management of Alcon International School. I thank all of our team members for their committed and passionate involvement in making this event a grand show. Lastly, I thank God Almighty for the continued support in all of our initiatives. Jai Hind!
May I please request the team Sansad Ratna to quickly come on the dais for a quick picture. Team Sansad Ratna, please come on the dais. May I now request everyone to stand up for the national anthem. Thank you. 